I was about to sing a Christmas song, right? And the first song that came into my head was about sunshine, which is not Christmas unless you're in Australia. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas because it's coming up. I want to wish you a Jerry Christmas because this guest is called Jerry. I want to wish you a happy holidays if you don't celebrate Christmas. Bit weird that we all celebrate Christmas even if we're not Christian, but they do get us with the presents when we're kids, don't they? I want to wish you a, a happy nothing if you're not doing anything and you hate it. I, w I could wish you all these things all day, but we've got a lot to get through, so let's just get it done. Let's just get it quick, 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 quick. Before I tell you about my wonderful guest today on the Downbeat Podcast, let's quickly talk about the sponsor of today's podcast, Displate. Displate make metal posters. They mount on the wall with a magnet. No drilling, no messing your wall up, no pulling a wall down. Fun fact, trying to mount a TV in my old flat, I actually pulled a wall down. Ever since then, I've learned how to do it properly with mounting pictures. What I do now is just use displays. They mount on the wall with a magnet. As I said, you attach the protective leaf to the wall. Then you attach the magnet and then you attach the display. Because they are magnetic, you can swap them out. You can get a code downbeat on display.com. You can get 20% off one to two displays or you can get 30% off three or more. If you buy three or more, you can interchange them because of the magnet. There's no mess. Your landlord's not even going to know about it. All these Nashville ones you're about to see, the ones in the background of this Nashville podcast, if you're watching on YouTube.com, please subscribe. The person who rented me the Airbnb didn't even know that I had stuff on the walls because it didn't leave a mark. It was amazing. Displate.com. Use the code DOWNBEAT. It supports me. It supports the podcast. My guest this week is Jerry Horton, guitarist, OG member of Papa Roach. We talked about them being one of the pioneering bands of the new metal scene in the 90s. He hates that word. He's very annoyed about that word. We talk about that. Talk about the dirty word new metal. Talk about their new album Ego Trip. We bring justice to the band Primus because they're wicked and some people think they're crap. But they are the best. One of the reasons I started playing drums, Tim Alexander. And Brain, actually. Great. I won't spoil it. You want to listen to the podcast, let's talk about Primus. We talked about Papa Roach always bringing cool young bands on their tours. And we talked about cars. The man's a car nut. He's Jerry Horton of Papa Roach on the Downbeat Podcast. Reverend Jerry Alan Horton? Uh, that is correct. Yes. Yes. How are you? Great, man. How are you? I'm so good. Thank you for coming on the downbeat. Absolutely. I mean, are you Nashville like from the start or no, you moved here? We're we're NorCal. Yeah. But I've I moved here about a year and a half ago. Oh, pretty recently. Yep. How are you enjoying it? I like it apart from the obvious humidity and uh in the summertime anyway. I love I love the weather, bro. I'm See, you're dressed for the studio. I'm dressed for outside. Had I been smart, I would have No, do you know put what? Some pants on. Do you know what though? I was in shorts. I did two episodes yesterday both in shorts. Yeah. And uh it was just because I was like, I can't do a full eight episode run in shorts. So I just put these on literally <laughs> one second. You text me and I said, I'll be down in a minute. Yeah. And I put these on. Okay. okay. I did turn the AC off though, so hopefully you're not too cold. Uh, you know what's funny is we did that tour uh, in Europe uh, over the summer and all of June, and then right from there we uh, I met my family in Spain. So I got used to no air conditioning, flew straight from there to Canada, and actually I think it was Chicago. They had the they had the um, the AC was set for, it was 60 degrees in the room, Ooh, Fahrenheit. chilly. Set for 50, which I didn't realize could even be done. Yeah, that's cold. But I totally pulled a European, like, turn the AC off, open the window, and I'm just, it took me a second to realize that, wait, what did I just do? That's not normal, but I got used to it. Just being there for that long, Yeah, you get used to it, I guess. It is 
I literally had this conversation with Tom Williams yesterday on this podcast. <laughs> so depending on which one comes out first, people would be like, these motherfuckers just talk about AC. <laughs> it's a serious <laughs> issue. It really is. In Europe, and everyone's excuse, I'm from Europe. You just get used to it. it or they go, yeah, but it's really cold for half a year. Like, yeah, what right. do you think Nashville is like in the yeah. summer? Like New York is colder. Sorry, in the winter. New York yeah, is right. colder in the winter. But it's ridiculous. Still got in the AC. Summer. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to get AC in my apartment in the UK, which is like unheard of. Right. Everybody's going to come over and look at you like, what did you do that for? This guy will be like, you coming over at summer? In fact, no, I live in Scotland. There is no point. There's literally no point. I think one day this summer I've gone, oh, it's almost hot. <laughs> That's <laughs> almost, a good one. It's almost hot here. Yeah. It's, um, we did on that run. I'm going to get into that run because th does that mean how long have you been home? Because that run was last uh, month. I've been home four days. Holy shit. Thanks for coming on. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't be fucking doing it. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Oh, good. So you did... Because we, we were on the same run together. Yeah. And I do want to touch on this later on. Because you guys, like, bring out... You just bring out, like... I, I was like, It's going to sound like I'm flexing myself here. <laughs> but, like, you bring out cool... Cool, like way more unheard of bands and you on that run i saw all your sideshows were like just cool stuff and i saw you're doing did you do spirit box sideshows on that or you're doing some spirit box stuff coming up we will be yeah yeah and like but i think we did a couple actually on that on the last one yeah yeah it's like we for the, anyone that doesn't know we just did a festival tour you just did a festival tour yep. everyone does the festival tours in the summer the issue that you have is that the shows in between, mm -hmm. you can't really do just festivals. You need shows in between. And they are usually vastly underpopulated because everyone, <laughs> everyone's going to a yep. festival at the end. Yep, absolutely. But you guys picked us for some side shows, which yeah. thank you for that. Yeah. And they were awesome and they were slammed. It was incredible. Yeah. It, it it did help that uh, we canceled a few of the the dates just before uh, the lockdown, and so holy shit, that's a long time ago. It is a long time ago, and so I think that's why you know people really like said, "Wow, well, we got to get there." Um, Was that but, your first time back since the pandemic? Yep. Holy shit. Yep. Oh wow! No wonder. Yep. So it was it was painful, you know on the lead up to it just because Europe is a big part of our touring business. Yeah. But you know, we, we were diligent about filling in, you know, tr being strategic on filling in other places, Australia and uh, all that stuff. And then that, you know, this was going to be our big bang back in. So and it, it was a bang. Yeah. Quite literally yeah. pyro. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like I, uh, I stood on stage. I can't remember what festival it was. One at like maybe Nova Rock, and I stood on stage because you guys were kind enough to give me a stage pass. I was like, I'm gonna watch Papa Roach side stage, and it was just like me. And there was like a tape around me. I was like, I wonder what that's for. And then like <laughs> three songs before the end, like I nearly get set on fire. <laughs> it was fucking crazy. Yeah, that that, and we didn't rehearse with it either. So, and that was our first time with Pyro. So, wow. it was just like. First song, and and all of us were just like, oh, "That was your first time." Shit, that was your first time with Pyro. Yeah, that so, surprises me. Yeah, so yeah, it was just like, "Oh shit, here we go!" You know, just go with it. And then I don't want to say the first two shows, there were a couple of instances where Jacoby was like straddled over one of the jets, <laughs> and you know, we ha obviously we have a guy there to. They have a kill switch or whatever, yeah. but you can see on video our stage manager kind of creeping in and trying to be like, not, hey, <laughs> stop, stop. But but it wasn't like it wasn't effective at all. He was just kind of like, get away, get away, get away. And then he had to jump out, and we were just all laughing. They're like nobody's gonna be mad if you save a guy <laughs> from getting guy lit from on fire. Getting his fucking face blown <laughs> off. It was Nova Rock. Was I smelt Kobe's hair? 
Yeah, that's right. I, I literally smelled it on stage. Yeah. I was like, it smells like hair. Oh my <laughs> God. That must have been close. Well, he puts like 10 layers of hairspray in his hair. So. There's just, he's a fucking walking <laughs> bomb threat on the stage. We call him kindling. <laughs> I, was got, I got a question that was loads later on, but while we're on this, because you said that's the first time without Pyro. Yeah. A band of like your, a, you know, acclaim, OGs. <laughs> Is there anything you haven't done yet that you still want to do? Because that surprises me that you haven't done, like Pyro is a smaller one, I guess, but even stuff like that, that surprises me that you haven't done Pyro. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, it, it's a case of, you know, we want to, we want to, when we do something, we want to do it right. And to do it right is expensive. Yeah. And we're, you know, we, we all have family, so we got to like, we can't say, oh, we're just going to spend all our money on production. You know, we got to find a balance. On, and it's obviously, it's no fun being trying to be practical and, yeah. you know, that Fru kind of frugal. Frugal, exactly. Um, so, you know, we've just been walking that line for years and, you know, worked out the numbers and said, this is going to be our big pop. And, uh, you know, we're going on tour later. Uh, and, later this month uh with shine down and we're not doing it because i mean they 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 do so much production it's kind of yeah. like what's the point but um so yeah we're that was like we're gonna do that and then as far as like stuff that we haven't done i mean you know we we talked about doing confetti yeah uh which would be cool you know there's there's like the toaster gag is something that we'd want to do, I'm sure. But what's the toaster gag? Uh, it's when you have you you have your built staging, and then uh, you come up through the like out of the stage. That's sick. that's Jacoby's like wet dream right there. No, there we go. Yeah, that's the, that's the sort of thing I'm talking about. So that's I even meant just like in ter like like because you got platinum records. So yeah, that's off there. You've yeah. you've got that. There's nothing above platinum, is there? Well, there's diamond, but. You know, is that that's like, 10 times platinum yeah um grammy you got a grammy no grammys we got nominated let me write that one down for you <laughs> grammy you got nominated a few times uh we got nominated for in 2000 i think one or two for best new artist and best video we got the the nomination for the video for broken home yeah Bang which banger which is not an easy watch yeah but it's still to this day one of my favorite videos it's a banging video Mar uh, marco siega directed um he's old school new york hardcore oh really uh yeah he was in the band uh, a punk band for years moved over to directing videos he directed last resort and broken home and uh There's literally like videos of my youth so i mean yeah Oh, I gotta know something. I gotta know something from the last resort video. Okay. Were there some? Was there silences on the drum kit? Was it completely? Because I, I remember when I was a kid, there was like I know obviously you're not the drum guy, but you're the <laughs> OG guy. But like when I was a kid, the the drum heads in the last resort video yeah. were black. Yep. And that was before you could get black drum heads. So at the time, I remember just thinking. Oh, the drum heads are black. That's really cool. And then as I got older, I did a couple of videos where they put black silencers on the drum kit. My brain just went, oh. is the last resort video really <laughs> quiet? <laughs> Can you remember? I, I, I'm i pretty sure they were. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a childhood, like I needed a childhood. Sorry. I'm, I'm, uh, how old are you? You look young. <laughs> 48. 48? Yeah. You look good, bro. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I used to be the old guy in the band. Yeah. Now Tony is. Now Tony. How old is Tony? We don't want to age shame him. Fifty-three. He's Man, a, he's OG punk. Do you know what though? There's like yeah, he was in like good, he played in Good Riddance for a bit, didn't he? Uh, he he. I think he did a stint with him, but he did. He was in Ten Foot Pole, Pulley. He was in Unwritten Law for a while. Wow. You know what? There's something to be said about like. I feel like musicians just age better no offense no it's true else. it's true having fun your whole life that's what it is yeah and you know we we obviously 
keep are active on stage. He, he was late as well because he was at the gym. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which is good. I respect that. I'll yeah. take that every day of the week. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we're, we work out, we go nuts on stage and you know, is anyone, uh, Jacoby sober? Yeah. Are you? Uh, yes. And I don't, I know Tony's not because so obviously I, Tony's not. I, he spent a lot of the summer with that guy. He, yeah. He, this la whole last tour, he complained that he was the only one that was drinking on, on the bus. He didn't, didn't even have crew guides to, to drink with. Really? Oh, this is bullshit. <laughs> like, cla I can literally imagine him saying that. Yeah. Uh, who's the guy in the band that must like, oh, sorry, while we're still on the age stuff, sorry, my brain goes everywhere, ADHD brain. Yeah. Um, but now you've got like, on stage, you've got some, you've got some young guns on stage. There's a spread. How old's Tuan? Oh, he's the young, he's the young one. He's like, yeah, he's younger the, than me. He's the baby. He's 30, 33. He's 20 years younger than Tony. <laughs> wow. That's kind of awesome. Though. He's 10 years younger than Tobin, 20 years younger than Tony. That's a good spread. That must be a good spread for like, Chelsea's going to bring me on to my next question. Good spread for like, just keeping in touch with like creativity. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Because my next question was going to be, Who's the guy in the band that has their fucking finger on the pulse? Because one of you does, or is it all of you? Because it's mostly Tobin and yeah. and Tuan are like, you know, because you, you guys bring like ego trip sounds like it could be made by a band that doesn't have a fifty three year old member. <laughs> yeah, it, do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, and and the producers that we work with do uh, like yeah. uh, Colin Britton and Nick. For along, those are the guys that did Crooked Teeth, Who Do You Trust, and Ego Trip. And we we also, you know, step out and um, Jason Evigan is another guy, amazing producer. Uh, Drew Folk. Um, yeah, you got the S, like A team. Yeah. Just, has there ever been any like, because you guys absolutely blew up. New metal. If for some reason you're listening and you don't know who Papa Roach is, then <laughs> congratulations. You have been living under a rock. But like you came up with new, is it, is it a naughty word for me to say new metal? Are you, are you cool it with used, it? It used to be, we used to hate it. Yeah, but, I know. You know. It, but like it's the, fine. the new metal era. Yeah, it's, yeah. You were like, you know, in it. Pioneers, part of creating the sound, part of doing everything. Um, was there any resilience? <sighs> Fucking professional with my phone not on silent. Um, was there any ever any resilience? Because you've pretty much banged out albums every two years since then. Pretty much. It, it, was there ever a point where you were resilient to changing or any kind of technology stuff? We've, I mean, even before Last Resort, we've always evolved. Uh, we we didn't really. Uh, I mean, as, as early, I think as, well, you take infest, you know, we had DJ AM on there. Um, love, hate tragedy. We had, you know, f some keyboards here and there. And that was like, rock bands don't do that. You know? Yeah. Was that like a conversation what you had you to have or, yeah. or you guys were all up for it? No, we were cool. Yeah. We were, yeah. And then, you know, we, uh, getting away with murder we brought in loop you know drum loops and yeah so we've, we've always like changed brought in new stuff and then really like i think it wasn't until i want to say 2012 where we really like brought in electronic stuff yeah so was the show did the show move to because obviously the show is now I mean, you could blow my mind and say it's not, but I assume the show is now time coded metronome. Uh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. At what point did that start? Uh, that, so that was yeah, that was probably twenty seventeen ish. And that, and to be honest, that that's the one thing that I see with artists who are reluctant to do that stuff, particularly a lot of the bands who were like when you were coming up, who are ah oh, fuck that click shit. Yeah. They just fucking drop. They it's 
it's hard. It's a hard thing to to navigate if you don't use the click because when you get up on stage, it's a completely different feel from being in the studio or just jamming. Yeah. Because you're the the adrenaline is so high that almost invariably you're you end up playing at least three to four BPMs faster than is on the record or then yep. really you have any business doing. <laughs> uh, so it's just, you know, it's, it's a kind of a, it's a, it's, it's a way to regulate ourselves. Um, and just to, to kind of keep at a certain pace. And, you know, the way that we use the, the time code and the tracks is really, you know, we have some of those backing tracks that are, that people are familiar with on a subconscious level you know, we have it in the mix, mm. but we don't like the main guitars is all obviously the guitars are the guitars. You know, there's, ba there's no like main instruments on, on tracks. Yeah. Twan's got his keyboards he's and his playing, drums he's and playing everything. You know, we're playing as much as we can. Uh, but you know, we don't have, we like, we have the, the born for greatness when he has the, the octave vocal drum yeah. that's on the track. You yeah. just can't do that live. Yeah. But you know, anything like, like little flavor or, or percussion thing that, you know, that's there. It's under as a support base. Yeah. If the, and, and really it comes down to, we do that because not only would it, would it, we've, we, we would feel like we're, you know, cheaping out yeah uh and we want to give obviously give the fans a, what they came for um but also if it goes down we can still jam yeah and it's not, not many gonna, can <laughs> it's yeah it's not gonna be like wh what yeah you know so canceling a show advice. yeah and then we don't cancel a show yeah so has it ever gone down yeah Fuck. i mean not for not for no, for, not after, for the whole set, yeah. but yeah. And then you just, well, you just freeze. There. I mean, you've got yeah. everything on stage to finish the rest of the song. Yeah. And also people don't realize back to the production thing, like you didn't need, obviously maybe on a, you know, friendship, musicianship level, you, you need Twan, but you didn't need, like a lot of people would have everything he does on tracks, not everything, but like, you know, it's, the keyboards and stuff like that, it would be easy for you to just have one less member yeah, and save more money. Yeah. Like that's expensive. Yep. And then the production is, ex is so expensive. Yeah. Like pyro is insane. That's why, that's why we did it for that one. It was the big festival tour. And then now we're not. Like people don't even know the level of how expensive pyro is. Yeah. It's take the number you think it is and add a zero. Yeah. It's, yeah, Insane. for sure. Safety, the actual cost of fire, I guess. Fuel. <laughs> All that shit. Yeah. The transport has to be insanely safe. Yeah. Nuts. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we could have all the keyboards, you know, all the backing guitars. We could have all that on track, but there comes a certain point where sometimes we want to add something into the set and it's it goes along with a song but it's not something we have recorded and it's just it it, it it kind of allows us to be nimble and adjust and change things and we, we don't necessarily like change things every night but mm. uh, it it just gives us a, a certain level of freedom uh, that, if something's not working you can change it out for a different song without yeah, or or if we need to jam, so like if Jacoby's stuck out in the crowd or whatever, and we got to oh, jam something, yeah. we can jam, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, he does like to <laughs> scoot around up there. <laughs> yeah. Um, something I love to ask people on the downbeat, particularly, I'm trying to think of the right word, because I don't want to, like, make you feel old, but, like, you're an OG. Yeah. OG's, OG's a better term no, than any, anything you might. So, like... How does a Papa Roach song come about? Like, what is the songwriting process? Um, it, it's changed over the, over the years. Uh, you know, we've gotten to a point where we have uh, what we call the riff bank, 
It's okay. where everybody kind of pulls in what they got. Uh, and we, when we get together, we'll just pull it up. And Is that like on, like on a fucking Dropbox or something? Yeah, I mean, you, sometimes we'll do that. I'll let Tobin will just bring his stuff and just start playing stuff. And we'll go, no, no, no. Yeah, that one. And then we'll get to work on it. Um, also, you know, with Colin and Nick, you know, we'll just get in and say what, what, you know, we'll just start talking about it. Yeah. What do we want? We want, te- you know, jump tempo. We want major key, blah, blah, blah. What do we want? You know, and then build it from the ground up with the producer. Building. Yep. That's what we, we usually come into. We'll come into, uh, almost the same really. We'll come into Will studio with like me and Tom have five songs that are, we think this is done. Mm -hmm. And then we have a bunch of riffs. Yeah. But then sometimes we'll get like, you know, we've written most of the album and we don't really have a fast song. And then it's just, like you said, pick the tempo, circle pit tempo, 222 (laughs) BPM. And then, and then we'll all go play something dumb and then I'll play that. And then we're like, okay, that's, that's fine. Nice. But by like back in Infest era, how were you writing then? Was that like jamming it was in the jam. jam room? Jam, yeah. Fuck yeah. Yep. No, no click, just jamming. Yep. Who came up with Last Resort? Tobin. He actually wrote it on the piano. What? Yeah. He had a piano. What? He went. He had, it. he had a piano in his, you know, his mom's house. Yeah. Because he. I mean, was, I don't know it, but because he was seventeen. Holy shit! Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's like, I, you know, he played us the the thing on the piano, and he's like, just imagine like a hip hop beat, you know, do do, and and so he started playing it, and he's like, just think about this on a guitar. And That's just like, so cool. Yeah. That's so I can't even imagine what that would sound like. That's, but yeah. It must have been good enough for you guys to be like, yeah, that's the one. I mean, it? we were all Wu Tang, so it was just like, <laughs> let's go, <laughs> yes. you know. That's so awesome. Yeah. Man, it's it's rare that, and again, I don't want to make you feel old, bro, but it's rare that I get someone who's been through it. Yeah. You've been through it. Been through a lot. Infest was on compact disc. It was on cassette. I was about to say, was, <laughs> was, was it that long ago that it was on cassette as yeah, well? Yeah, it was a tail end of cassettes, yeah. So, without, you know, without being too nosy you made bank from, made a, from infest we made a good chunk of change yeah because that was the tail end of the music industry as yeah. we know it yep and then we made we made money but we oh, spent it like it was just yeah. always going to be there and the funny thing is like we, it wasn't until we got on tour so first major tour was warp tour 2000 uh jumped from that to corn with what was it power, cool. i think it was power man 5000 or something it was on that too i know I, wasn't that like it was, was 2001 it like a headbangers ball or something or like yeah i maybe. think i remember it. That, this is i was i'd have been 14 this is prime me yeah so uh on that tour they were like you know took us under under their wing and said they were calling us grasshopper the whole time grasshopper we show you the way it was this corn yeah uh fieldy was like i'm gonna gonna show you guys everything and he like showed because i don't party but the rest of the guys they were like rode his bus and it was you know the next day waking up at 3 p.m 4 p.m and (laughs) it was bad but also he was like yo you guys like most bands really like take a long time to build their career you guys just went straight up like Mm. that so you gotta be smart with your money because it's not always going to be there and we were like yeah whatever yeah i mean look yeah whatever feely from corn who who ships crates of coors light over to europe because they can no way i swear they did that for a while. That's fucking sick. Yeah. But it's not even like a great beer. No, it's <laughs> shitty beer, but that's what they wanted. So they spent the money to get it. That's nuts. 
Did you? Did you? So you, you don't party. I mean, you 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 know, partying is a subjective. I chill. Term. I hang out. You, you hang out. You yeah. chill. But like, when you were in like, I guess like, big money label deal back then. Did you buy anything dumb? Did you do anything like? I mean, I bought a I I bought a car. I I'm, I spend my money on, like. I don't spend my money on cars, but that's my that's my thing. Cars are your thing. Yeah. Fucking awesome. Let's let's go. What was so did you have like a moment when you signed that for what's the was it DreamWorks? Yeah. When you signed that deal, you don't have to tell me how much the deal was. Unless you want to tell me the deal, the deal I was. I think it was like the last one of the last like big deals for a rock band. Yeah. It was like a million dollar deal. But it you know, obviously that's you have like, to pay it back as well. You gotta pay it back <laughs> and that's like album budget video budget touring budget like it's all we got yeah. a little money from that but and those videos were not cheap i'm gonna tell you what the most expensive i want to ask you what the most expensive video you think we we made was and I, you you probably won't I'm, i can guarantee you're not gonna guess it i would have guessed one of those two nope they were expensive last resort was 250 i mean that is expensive but and in that era it wasn't yeah i guess it's quite it was pretty era. normal but that coming off of a million dollar deal like that's that it big, wasn't on that record uh, oh uh, i'm not gonna get it tell me she loves me not we what? we hire they hired dave myers who did all the um missy elliott and the Busta oh, Rhymes. Prime early 2000s videos. Yeah. So we hired that guy and he took this empty lot in downtown LA. Yeah. And basically turned it into a carnival, like brought everything in extras, actors. It was like 600 grand. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. That's crazy. People are just in case you don't know, because some people, a lot of people listen to this who are like musicians. A lot of people just like music. Yeah. And a lot of people who are in, musicians, but in very small bands, they don't realize that that just doesn't happen anymore. Nope. Just, I mean, not on that. I mean, you, you, you would have to, you'd have to be. I don't even think they would now. Yeah, they do, I'm sure. Do they? Yeah. I'm trying to think what. Like Jay Z would, that would be, uh, that would be yeah. normal. I, I always wonder with that, though, like, are the. Are the managers at the top there? I don't know any of them before anyone comes to me. But like, I don't know what managers are like. They probably go like, I know how much that camera costs. I'll give you less. Or is it Jay-Z who just go in, I want this. I don't care how much money it costs. I'm not asking you this. Yeah, I mean. Hypothetical. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, yeah. Um, so what, what was the like, obviously you get the million dollar deal. If any of this is too personal or lame or whatever, just tell me. Uh, so you get the million dollar deal. I assume you will. You all take a bit. Yeah, I mean, it was like I said. We we had we were able at that point to quit our jobs. Sick. And so we we got in the got in the studio, went to work, and then we were on the road in a van for probably three months. On Infest. Yeah van yeah and because you know nobody knew like was there wasn't there was no internet basically crazy yeah so the only way that people were going to get to know music was either by word of mouth or by radio or mtv yeah so it was you know we had in fact our last resort went to radio the album came out, I think, in April, and Last Resort started, I think we put it out in maybe February mm. or maybe March, but there was still like, it was, it, it was like a, it's like a slow build, and then, so it, it didn't really like, really kick off until we got on Warp Tour. Right, and then at that point it was just like, it, yeah, the trajectory was like this, and then it's so just like overnight. Yeah, it was like we when we booked the warp tour, we were set for the third stage at noon, 
And within two weeks, we were headlining. Yeah, that's a big jump. With Green Day and No Effects. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> and it was like, and they were cool. Like, obviously, they, they had every right to just go, what the fuck? Who are these kids? And why yeah. the hell are they? Why are we having to share our spot with them? But Fat Mike would just rib us on stage. And it was, you know, it was cool. Uh, Wait, are you boys with them? Was it? No, I mean, no, we're we're not super tight with them, right. but they were they were cool about it, and and it was yeah, it was a good time. Uh, the funny thing is, we were more like starstruck on Snapcase than yeah. any, any other any other band out there. So yeah, so you, which is interesting because you're you. What's your background with musical uh, influences? Uh, well, it started for for me. It was Metallica and Slayer and. I mean, Testament, Sepultura. Oh, you, you're uh, heavy. Yeah. Heavy. Nine, Nine Inch Nails, Skinny Puppy. Oh, li literally listing all the bands that I like. <laughs> really fucking and cool. And the other guys were like Chili Peppers, uh, P-Funk, Fug oh, wow. Fugazi, Janes, Mr. Bungle. So they were they were into more like funky, punky, weird shit. There's an EP, isn't there? That or like pre Infest. Yeah. That's like funky. Yep. Super fun. So I'm sorry, it's I terrible. Can't, can't remember what it's called. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm say not, what it is yeah, because okay. I don't need any more any more people going listen to it. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. But yeah, the, the Mr. Bungle. Jesus. Yeah. So uh, and I've told this story a bunch of times, but I'm going to tell it here just because you'll appreciate it i would love it uh we like they were a band before i joined the band like they were a band maybe a month and a half before i joined and it was obviously a different drummer dave buckner yeah uh jacoby a different bass player trombone player <laughs> no guitar player oh my god i didn't even realize no guitar player so and and we had mutual friends uh we we went to different schools had mutual friends so we would you know would go to parties and my my friend had them play at his house so i went and i watched them and you know i was hanging out with some friends and i was just like cool that's fun but not, they, my, not my thing you know <laughs> not my thing is a bassist and a fucking trombone <laughs> uh and fun fact they recovered fire by Jimi hendrix with no with no guitar yeah so after that uh you're so lucky that the internet didn't exist <laughs> <laughs> sorry carry on so after that like a week a week or so after that um jacoby called me up and he goes because he knew the the girl i was dating at the time and he said hey man uh i heard you play guitar why don't you come over and jam with us and i was like mm, i'm good thanks <laughs> Cause I was metal. Yeah, I did not find that really a, a appealing at all. And he was just like, ah, you know. He called me four times after that, and he's like, can imagine the like last time he was like, come on, I know you don't have shit to do. You're in your bedroom playing by yourself. Come on. And I was like, fine. I just wanted to shut him up. I was like, fine. You know. So we went and jammed, and it wasn't like sparks flying. You mm -hmm. know, but it was fun. Something to do. And it was some it was something to do because we the, the town we grew up in was Vacaville, California, and we also called it Lack of Thrill. So, you know, it was just we were bored. Yeah. And and it was fun. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. We'll just try and make see how it goes. Try and make things work and you know, mix the styles or whatever. And you know, we just kept doing it for fun and eventually got serious about it. How did you get rid of the trombone player? He kind of saw himself out. Like he was like, <laughs> when you got, because he was like a big, he was a big stoner. We tried to like make it work, but it was kind of obvious to everybody. It just because we weren't going for a ska thing, yeah. And it was just kind of like, ah, it's not the sound anymore. So, arguably, it was never the sound. Yeah, <laughs> like a fucking trombone. Yeah. Um, I've got to say this because everyone gets everyone gets annoyed, but I don't care because it's my platform. <laughs> anytime anyone says Metallica, anytime anyone says Metallica, I need the ranking of your top five oh, Metallicas. Okay, how many? How many? Top five. 
I would argue that there are a top, there is a top ten of great Metallica albums. Okay, but I want the top five. And your first answer it usually dictates the conversation. Okay, well, there there are two different sets for me. There's the set of when I got into them, mm. and sort of like because you know when you nostalgia is a powerful thing, right? Oh yeah. So something that hits you at just the right time, it's just going to stick in there and it's going to be hard, even though there's other stuff that's better. You just have that emotional attachment to it, you know? Yeah. So for me, it was justice was number one. That was the first thing I got into. And that Correct was the answer. first, that was the first, uh, that was my first introduction into them. And that was like why I started playing guitar. Um, then it's master then it's ride the lightning and i'm gonna piss some people off here it is this is the one this is where it gets to here those three are normally yeah interchangeable and then here is the hot take black album yeah kill them all my list is the same <laughs> depending on how i'm feeling yeah uh lightning and puppets okay flip-flops yeah because i feel like lightning for me is like a hardcore album almost totally you, like you listen to yep creeping death or anything it's like a hardcore band is doing that now yeah, yeah. but so like i remember the first time i heard an acoustic guitar before metal with yeah. master of puppets uh -huh. and i was just like wait you can do that <laughs> i mean it wasn't like a trombone or anything yeah, 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 yeah. it's like wait a minute you can do that that yeah. was cool it was cool that was my um, my personal like I went in I got into Metallica and then I went from Metallica straight to Black Metal because S and M had come out first Metallica I heard Metallica on like Beavis and Butthead and stuff like that. that's yeah. how I got into it but then S and M came out and I was like oh Metallica with an orchestra that would be cool and then I got it and I was like this is the coolest thing I've ever heard I wonder if there's another band like this and then I googled it and then like Emperor came up. <laughs> And I was like, oh, the drums are so fast. <laughs> and then that was it. And then I was, I was down on my like symphonic black metal thing. Nice. So I, I like flip flopped everywhere. Because before that, I was, I loved, I, what, when new metal was a naughty word, what did you call Papa Roach? Well, we, or we were just, call it? we were, we were kind of contrarians at the time. Like we just wanted to be called a rock band. We didn't. We didn't like we didn't we we didn't see ourselves as being that forever. Mm. So Which didn't happen anyway. We didn't yeah, I mean we didn't want we just didn't want to be boxed in like uh because we had evolved from something else into that we Oh something else. Yeah, it was something else. <laughs> it it we knew that we were gonna change and the, obviously the common denominator was going to be rock. So we were just going to be a rock band and that's what all we, we wanted to be. We, we kind of just, we didn't want to become a parody yeah. of ourselves. Yeah. And so that we, we saw that as kind of like, you know, cause when, when a, when a genre sort of jumps in popularity and then fades out, it's like when you're, when you're seeing, as the has been it's you it's got, kind of rough you have to wait for 20 years for it to come back yeah but you know we we just we didn't see ourselves as has-beens mm. we still wanted to make music and we were just like we we knew even at the peak of infest that as popular as it was like as uh, on fire as that was it was going to be a flash in the pan and, and people were going to be on to the next thing. And it was like, we got to, we're a career band. We're, we're on to the next thing. We just want to be a rock band. That's all. Yeah. Just call us a rock band. But. I mean, it, I think it happened. I would say Papa yeah. Roach is a rock band. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have said new metal for fucking 15 years. Yeah. I mean, we obviously, you know, because we came up in that time, that's what people will associate us with. And it, 
it's sort of less a dirty word nowadays than it used to be, you know, mm. back in like 2005, six. Yeah. Yeah. It's like not at the time, at the time it was awesome. And then about yeah. five years later, everyone was like, Oh no. Yeah. Ugh. You know who got away with it? Death tones. They got scot free. Absolutely. Because they were something else. Yeah. You know, they were, I think that is, I would say us and Deftones are uh, more, more so Deftones, the two bands that came up in that era and actually Deftones were pioneers of the, of the genre. Yeah. But as soon as the genre hit, gone. Ow. Yeah. yeah. They were immediate. Yeah. And you know, they, they make real music, like real, uh, really good music, really good. Consistently. It's, yeah. So. I like, I don't, I really want Abe Cunningham on the podcast at some point. Like, Desperate is one of my favorite drummers. So I can't ever, Easy. like, I can't ever, like, I don't want you to say anything because they're obviously your friends. <laughs> I wish, and I hate being this guy because someone said it about our records before and I hate it. I wish I could have a remixed version of Gore. Like, I'm one of those people, I don't know what it is, I can't, if I don't like the production, I can't see past the production. And Gore, all the songs, yeah, I love them. Yep. And then I just can't go on. And I like black metal, so I don't know what the problem is. Like, I'm just like, I can't get on board with it. So You have to change your perspective. That's it. It's a me problem. It's 100% of yeah. a fucking me problem. Um, but, but then they came back with Ohms, and it's, you know, I'm like, we're, we're back, baby. <laughs> That's showbiz. <laughs> And I like Prayers and Triangles off Gore is honestly one of my favorite Deftones albums. So I'm talking shit. Yeah. Don't tell Ape. If you're watching this for, for whatever reason, Ape, uh, please come on here. We have mutual friends of the drum world. I want to talk about foundational nutrition with you guys real quick. If you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you will know that I have been taking AG1 for about six months now. In that time, I've got rid of all of my biohacking supplements, my multivitamin, all of that stuff, because all of it is in AG1. That's because AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. Since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your baseline health. I take one scoop one little scoop of AG1 with 250 milliliters of water every morning before my coffee. First things first, let's get the AG1. Get it in me. Tastes nice, right? Got pleasant Pantone to it, like a forest green. On tour, I use the travel packs. Now, on tour, as a drummer, as, you know, someone that is opera, has to operate, at a high level every single day on tour, AG1 is unbelievably helpful because tour is about two things other than music. It's about getting sick and it's about being stressed because you're around so many people all the time. Thanks to the stress adaptogens like ashwagandha, thanks to vitamin C, magnesium, I have my stress and my immune system supported at a cellular level. You know I wouldn't be telling you about this, twere it not to be true. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D3, K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1 forward slash the downbeat. That's drinkag1 forward slash the downbeat. Check it out. Help support me, help support the podcast, help support yourself. Come on. Um, do you think that shaking off the new metal was a long process or did it, was there anything you, you did to get rid of it? Cause how, how do you, how do you even go about shaking a term off? Yeah. And I think we just, we did, we knew that we weren't going to make people stop saying it. It was just like, we just got to do, we just got to make the music that, you know, proves that we're not just that one thing. And 
you know, the second album, Love, Hate, Tragedy, was, it's a bit dark, uh, but it's much more melodic than mm. Infest, and that really, like... A lot more chorusy. A lot more chorusy. Uh, you know, we, we went into, like, vocal harmonies and explored different tunings and all this new stuff, and it was a... It, uh, it was a creatively like liberating album and the record label, I think because Infest was such a success, they were like, Oh, these guys know what they're doing. Let's just let them do whatever they want. And then record came out and didn't hit like they thought it was going to rough time though. When was that? Like 2003, two, two. Yeah. Um, and it was probably because we didn't put out another infest that mm. it didn't do so well. Um, but I think that we had to go through that to get to getting away with murder. Uh, and like you said, that was also the, it was like the switch from CDs to downloads mm. and, but in the bad time when downloads were free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you know, record labels were, going bankrupt and being bought up by other record labels and all that kind of stuff. So it was like, we didn't know if we were going to have, if we were going to make another record, you know, on DreamWorks or it, at that point it was Geffen. Is that re you signed a different deal or did you get dropped? Did no, get dropped? we, we got moved like mm -hmm. our, like DreamWorks got, basically the whole catalog got bought by Interscope. And at that time, Geffen was still sort of the rock label. Yeah. And slowly but surely over the, you know, 2003, four, five, six, Geffen just kind of went away and Interscope got rid of almost all the rock bands. So. Mm, yeah. And they, like 90s Interscope was rocking yeah absolutely i mean speaking of weird music i'm like secretly a massive primus guy Me, that that's I, my band yeah really yeah. no way oh yeah oh i yeah. fucking love primus and it, like come on jerry was a race car driver <laughs> oh oh we're talking we're, now we're talking tony hawk soundtracks yeah come on yeah yeah i i saw i saw primus in uh davis at UC Davis and it was like I, I'll never forget it they played with the Melvins and while uh, we were there watching the Melvins and I'm I look over and and I, uh, I see uh, at Monitor World I see Les and he looks I can see he looks over and he's just scanning the crowd I think and I see him and, and he it seemed like he stopped at me and he was like what's with up that fucking massive like, hand oh. with that fucking massive hand <laughs> oh man i like people forget that a lot of primus haters i don't do you know what i know i don't think i've ever talked about primus on the podcast because really? everyone fucking hates primus <sighs> come on tom williams don't even just text oh, him i'm gonna just text him primus fucking rules yeah. like he will lose his shit he hates it so fucking much he and doesn't know i've tried to turn him on to like like Frizzle Fry. Frizzle Fry. Some of the riffs yeah. are so fucking heavy. Yep. Bass riffs mainly, but like, yeah, he's got a weird thing going on, but I love it. Yeah. That was my, honestly, I, like, loved Metallica, loved the super heavy shit. Yeah. But again, the same CD that I bought that had, actually, that was a tape. Um, a cassette tape, if anyone doesn't know, is a plastic piece of uh, <laughs> machinery <laughs> that you could play music on. Um, I, it was a Beavis and Butthead compilation. And, oh, okay. And, and, do you know the one I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it had Primus on it. Yep. I can't remember what song, but it was something from maybe Frizzle Fry. And I was just like, what the hell is the drumming? And yeah. That, and that just got me oh, you know, hooked on drums. Insane. Yeah, ridiculous. Uh, for me, it was uh, the the video the Jerry was a race car driver video and they like see that was my first time of really seeing a, a huge circle pit. Yeah. 
And I was just like, just look at all those people just like bouncing around is, in, in, you know. Is that the Woodstock? Is that a Woodstock? No, I, can't, was, I can't remember that video. No, it was in a, it was in a club. Uh, they shot it and it was a place called the Phoenix Theater in Petaluma. And it wasn't, I mean, it was like 1,500 people. Mm. But I mean, at that time, yeah, I didn't. There might as well be a million people. Yeah. So it was just like, and then going to the show and being in that yeah. whole thing, it was just like, it was the best. The, Wo the Woodstock 94, My Name is Mud. Yeah, 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 yeah. People just chucking mud on the stage and he just like breaks. And Speaking he's of production, that was like the first time digital distortion, like it almost ruins the sound, but it's a thing. What, like a mastering No, thing? they did it in, I think it was in recording. Oh, what, um, my, my name is Mud. Yeah. That. You can, if you hear, if you listen, you can hear it. Yeah, you can hear it more at a low volume, but it's, it's not even like analog distortion. It's, it's digital distortion. In it's a, really weird. In a good way or a bad way? Don't ruin this for me. It, I haven't noticed it. Took it took me a minute to, to get used to it, and I didn't like it at first, but it, if you turn it up, it's not as, it's not as bad, but... At first, I was like, oh, I don't know if I like this, but... I'm going to have to go back to that yeah. and check it out. I've never seen Primus live. It's really annoying. Yeah. Never seen him. And there was that whole period where they had different drummers. Yep. And I was, when I was into them, I was actually too young to go to a show. I was like real super young. Yeah. It's, now I would love to. It's pretty incredible. It's not the same without Tim, though. Wait, is he gone again? No, he's there, but... That's what I mean. There, yeah. When I was old enough to go, he had gone. And yeah. I loved Brain. Yeah. I did love Brain. I, yeah. I love, like, people... Man, I, like... I, I kind of fell off whatever the green one was, like, a, maybe, like, a 2005. Yeah. I fell off after mm -hmm. Anti-Pop. But, like... Which was Brain, and the drumming is fucking incredible, and some yeah. of the riffs in that. That was their, like, little new metal moment. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the the Brown album. Yeah. Like, it was recorded with a fucking, like, I think they bought their own desk, and they didn't know how to do it. And they just, <laughs> like, Les had set up a studio, yeah. put the mics up, just tracked, and then was just like, print. <laughs> So it's, it sounds like he's recorded in a shoe, but yeah. it's so sick. Yeah. I mean, I saw something, I saw a quote just recently and it was like, I think it was uh, Prince said, because he was like arguing with his engineer about, you know, she was like trying to get good sounds and he was like... It, he didn't want to wait for that. He was just like, just put, just throw it up. Let's go. Let's go. I need to get it down. And he was like, people don't buy sounds. They buy music. Except for me and Gore. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, you're a, still into it. It's a, it, no, it's a, it's a good point. People don't, people don't buy sounds. They buy music. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yep. There is, I do have a limit though. Sometimes, sometimes I'm like, Gore isn't my limit. Cause I still like Gore. Yeah. But sometimes I'm like... No, I, I agree. Why did you do that? Yeah. Why, why have you gone and done that? Saint Anger. <sighs> so, <laughs> I've got a Saint Anger tattoo. <laughs> this is my dedication. I've got uh, the word snares off. Nice. With the Metallica. Nice. And I'm like... Number one, I don't know if people know, it's one of the loudest albums of all time because of yeah. the mastering. It was... It was in the peak loudness wars. Yeah. But the... Have we, you, which we got caught up in. Did you? You got a loud one? Yeah. Is it on the top 10 loudest? No, I don't think so. But we were just like... I'm fucking touched. That was, a, that was a, a point of... That was a point of... Uh, that was a note that we added to... It was... What needs to be louder. Paramore sessions, I think. Yeah. It's got to compete with the, you know, all the... Yeah. The, do, you know what the, do you know what the loudest album of all time is no you don't know no. Like, in terms of like a mastering like the whatever they call it the odd the db whatever um it is californication 
Really? It's the loudest mastered album of all time. And when you listen back, because I don't know when the last time you listened to Californication was. When you listen back to it and you really, like, and you have a grasp of mastering or whatever, you're yeah. like, wow. It is like, you can see the waveform just like a fucking, <laughs> bo- like a block. <laughs> I'm trying to get this. That's and I've, wild. I've got, um, I'm trying to pull it up. If you're just what, listening to this, I'm sorry, this is dead air. I'm not going to get Simon to edit it out. Um, I'm not going to get it. Loudness War. Yes, here we go. History, blah, 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 criticism, blah, 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 blah. Shut up, shut up. It's all bullshit, though, anyway, because it doesn't really make it louder. It doesn't. No. Perceived loudness. Yeah. And it just squishes it. In fact, I'm, o- I'm off it. I'm off, <laughs> I'm off the loudness war. Um, but St. Anger, have you ever heard the... I'm, I'm low-key a St. Anger apologist, but okay. only in my old age because... I, I bought it when it came out. It came out the day I finished school and my mum drove me to buy it. And I was like, because the song St. Anger, the first single at the time, I was like, Lars is doing double kicks. Sort of ignored the down tempo bit. Uh, I was like, they might be back. Yeah. My mum drove me to the store. We put it on. My mum remembers this to this day. <laughs> Like she would, if, if someone mentioned saying anger, she'll be like, "Oh, is that the one you didn't like?" Oh. Like she remembers, and she just remembers my fucking face when oh. it was like even track one, I was, and I, she knows it was just whatever. But this is this is me defending production ruining songs. Okay, the song, some kind of monster. Yeah, the CD. A CD is a, a compact disc is a metal disc that you used to be able to put in a machine to make music, like a download. Um, it, it was a five track EP, but it was just some kind of monster and like alternate live versions or whatever. And track five on it, you can still see, you can still hear it on Spotify. Track five on it is labeled alternative mix. Okay. And I'll tell you what, the word alternative is carrying a lot here. But they might as well just written mixed. Like it's <laughs> actually a, it's mixed. actually mixed and it's good. Oh. If they mixed the whole album, it wouldn't it would be a seven. Right. See, it's six, just like six. it goes to show you, I mean, no band is perfect, no band does everything perfectly or right sometimes, but You got any regrets? You got any career regrets musically? I mean you, not music. I don't think we have regrets musically. It's just, you know, I think some songs we feel like maybe just didn't get a chance. Uh, a chance. Um, some songs we thought would be bigger than they were, but you know, it's, all, it's all part of the journey. You don't have you don't have a stinker. You've got a pretty nice trajectory. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're about to say there's a stinker. This is what I'm. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a stinker. I think that it's it's one of those things that where time kind of uh, time away from something makes you realize real like makes you see some of the good things about it. Uh, I think for that for us is probably Metamorphosis album. What year was it? 2008. That was our peak. Like rock like denim and leather long hair yeah classic rock album like papa roach version of a classic rock album kind of thing i'll be honest with you i'm not that familiar with it but and, maybe that's and why there's a reason the, the the key there is to just keep creating music and then everyone forgets exactly i, I forgot exactly <laughs> i forgot slash didn't know except for saint anger no one can ever forget saint anger yeah they make jokes about it live. I saw them at download. Yeah, I mean, you have to own up to it. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Because James will go like, how about we play some stuff of St. Anger? And then everyone's <laughs> like, no. And he's like, ah, we're not going to do that. It's like, yeah. The amount of money that went into that album. I'm oh. so sorry that another podcast has devolved to Metallica chat. But. Yeah. Uh, have you talked about the Primus Metallica thing? Well, Les trying yeah. out. Yeah. I haven't actually talked about it on here, but I, I love it. It's on. Oh, it's something that I, I, I would love to see on video. Yeah. 
I don't think it's out there. I don't think... Th did they talk about it on some kind of monster, the DVD? But I don't think that... I think there's like one... It's just a little... The they tiniest, didn't really go into yeah. it. Yeah. I feel like they were doing a bit of a... Let's just get everyone who's a, who's a somebody in the base uh -huh. world. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. I, I wonder if he would have stood... Like, because he's got such a such an ear for production. I wonder if he would have stood for the mix. Probably like, not. Ah. Yeah. No, we're not doing that one. <laughs> That's my Liz Claypool impression. Um, yeah, oh, I could talk about Metallica all day. This is the problem. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about hobbies because you don't you're you're sober. Was that did that come out of oh shit? I need to be sober, or are you SoCal no, straight edge? Yeah, I, I'm straight edge without claiming straight edge. Basically, what's the reason for not claiming? Because I don't I don't sometimes smoke a joint. <laughs> No, it's not that. It's just like I, you know, I'm not like the guy who, you know, judges other people for what they do. You know, it's just like I do what I do, and you do what you like, and that's cool. Tom Williams the same way, straight edge without saying straight okay. edge. Although when he hangs out with straight edge people, he claims edge. <laughs> <laughs> he does it all the time. So is that from? I had it. It's gonna sound silly. I had a drink once when i was like 20 i didn't was I hated the way it tasted wasn't into it uh but yeah i, I never really jumped into it so, after that so i'm trying to think if sorry i like exhaled there like i fucking didn't agree i fucking i agree i've been trying lately to only drink before days off on tour okay and i am so fucking bored it is insane so what do you do what do you i can't do it i don't know what to do with myself uh what are you doing on tour yeah i mean you know we're uh i have well we have I, we have tony for entertainment <laughs> you just all sit and yeah. let him perform yeah i mean you know i i i'm i'm into cars obviously we're gonna get to that because i'm yeah. excited uh I do some video games here and there, but, um, on tour, it's like, you know, on days off it's shows and we'll go and like have a group dinner or do, sometimes we'll do, do shit together, but yeah. But what are you doing? Like between waking up and sound check? I'm actually, I'm kinda, interested, but also I'm like, give me ideas, bro. <laughs> like I, I go mean, to the gym, but that's it. Yeah, that's the, it's wake up, coffee, get, get situated in the room, gym, sound check, hang out, maybe riff a little bit and show. And then after that, watch Tony drink. You just sit around and watch. I mean, I remember we were in Architects' I mean, room and you, you yeah. were in there and we were all having a fucking do. Yeah. So it, I guess that was entertaining. It, yeah, I mean, ha like for me, like hanging with my friends who are drinking, I'm, I have I have a blast. Yeah. If it's like people I don't know and they're like... Oh, yeah, it's rough. Even for a drinker, that's rough. I'm out. Yeah. But I'm cool, chilling. And actually... One of my one of my hobbies is writing down stupid shit that people say. Nice. While they're fucked up. And then relay it to them later on. And then yeah. You got a fucking book written for Tony. I do. It used to be I started it about twenty years ago. And Oh, it, so this is not a bit. You're hundred percent serious. Oh, it's yeah. I'll I'll rattle some off to you. Yeah, please do. Uh but it it started they're called zanny zanies and it started when the guys got on the whole zan thing yeah and it was oh i've been there <laughs> it was like it's called the zanny this zanies is, this so is so fucking funny <laughs> it was just like they're saying some really weird shit i gotta start writing this down go on hit me okay i gotta get hold on get, get the zanny zanies out the first few years was Tobin was a large part of it. Yeah. But when, when Tony got in the band. <laughs> Tony Zan. Tony Montzana. He completely took over. So this is like, 
This is probably two, three years ago. I love the fact it's in here. Here we go. Let's let's get some good ones here. How'd you do that at the same time? <laughs> what exactly are you talking about? Uh, uh, this is a this is a hungover Tony. Uh, my eyes hurt. Maybe it's the brain behind them. <laughs> uh, My eyes out. Maybe it's the brain behind yeah, them. Yeah, and fun. that's not even the good ones. Like, it's like funny. It's it, scientific it's, as well. It's really. You should release them as like a small book. I've, I've toyed with different ways of doing it. Um, I don't know what it means, but it's the only one that makes sense. This is just like people mashed out of their brains. Yeah. Uh, we didn't make poor choices. We made more choices. <laughs> I love your like giving it, it's like got, I mean, acting, acting it's into gotta it. Be, it's got to be. Yeah. It's I can hear be. Tony saying all of these in my head. Yeah. There's some that I'll read later to you. Oh. They're just like, it's really bad. Nice. <laughs> we'll get those later. We'll get those later. Um, you want to talk cars? Let's do it. I don't know much about cars. I recently, everyone that's on the Patreon, please continue to give me money. <laughs> Cover your ears. I recently bought a nice car for the yeah. first time in my life. And I was like, wait, what have I been missing out on? Like, this is sick. <laughs> um, so? So I got a Audi S3. Yep. Nice. Which has been tuned. Oh, as a stage two nice and then so i got 400 400 exactly it's 398 look at you yeah. uh and it has black window it's black with black windows black wheels black grills i got it completely de-chromed it is look at you it is that's I, look like a, I look like a drug dealer i mean you know that's the goal right <laughs> but i like i've never had a fast car yeah. And I've never had a car that I like really like. It makes me, when I get come down from my apartment and I go to go to the gym and I see my car and I'm just like, oh. yeah. it actually makes me proud of myself. Yeah. And then like happy. And I know it's like, a, it's, it, I know there's no possessions. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something that actually actually brings me joy because yeah. i'm like i fucking did that absolutely so what car you got what car is a so um it's funny because i like my first thing when i bought you know when we got some money that's what i was gonna get yeah, into, yeah. i i bought a viper and that was like in you know early 2000s yeah oh that 2002. was 2002 uh I, that was my dream car, you know, cause like the late eighties, it was like, they, they had that concept car and it was like, you know, the American supercar yeah. and it was a V10 and, you know, it was just like something that really just Did you scared. have the stripe? I didn't have the stripe. Interesting. You know, it was like, it was the Viper's already a loud car visually. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to like stealth it a little bit what color was it it was like a graphite gray mm. i didn't want to go red because that's like just begging for trouble yeah so yeah i had that for a while uh loved it got a you know got hooked up with an audio company jl audio they decked me out got a you know massive sound system in there and Love it. um and then at from there i i also got into like old school custom 50s cars and it's very very so cal yeah so it was like it's it started out for me with uh like zz top videos well, all right okay so there was one uh, i think it was uh what is it legs they had they had the the red hot rod yeah uh with the zz on the side you know yeah that yeah, was a, that's a 34 ford uh and then like late 80s again uh billy gibbons had a car that he built and this is like really nerding out going in the weeds but there was a builder 
called Bo- Boyd Coddington. He he had a show uh, for a while, but they built this car called Cadzilla, and it was a it was a it started life as a forty eight Cadillac, but it was so customized that by the end of it, there was only the front bonnet from the Cadillac yeah. from the actual Cadillac, and the rest was all custom like new she wow. new body new yeah, yeah, yeah. new frame and this was the first time that anybody had ever done larger than 20 inch wheels and they did it was like see it was this was 1989 22 inch wheels on this massive custom car what was it called cadzilla with two z's uh keep talking simon and, can we while we're doing this bit and you can leave me talking to you in please but can we have <laughs> please have a picture of cadzilla up while this is happening so when when this like hit the scene hit all the magazines it just hit me in the face like it blew me away i was like oh my god like i gotta i gotta get in i'm i'm into this this one yes it's so, so it sick. sent it sent me down the rabbit hole and that's where the money went basically <laughs> on restoring them or did you buy multiple no i bought one yeah and it started out fairly mundane in terms of money and expectations and all that. Yeah. And then it just snowballed into something you com- still have completely it. different. Yeah. Did you drive it here today? No. I have it at the house, but I didn't drive it here. It's, it's just, it's too hot and it, it takes too much time to get right. prepped. And, uh, but yeah, that was like, that and and the one that i bought it that's a whole other saga okay that like i don't want to bore your your listeners with it's like that's that's for a for a car podcast car podcast yeah because it'll be things i don't know yeah so what's your daily driver oh uh my i have a i have a truck for my daily nashville baby and and oh yeah brother i got it i've actually got it while we were still in california and and it's just it's it's one of those things where well it was it was kind of a specific thing at the time like we had we lived uh about two hours from lake tahoe we had a place up there and i wanted something that i could throw some gear in bring the family up there yeah not worry about getting stuck in snow and that was the reason for it and i just i had a truck a long time ago and i just i like it like throwing shit in the back and it's one of those things and and it's another one of those it's something that i don't have to worry about because i have my it's a mercury it's a custom yeah like i have that that i gotta worry about and then i have a 911 that i that i worry about gonna get there must be something in the middle here you were like i'm into cars there's this really old car and i drive a truck i'm like no No. there (laughs) isn't there is another one yeah so the the 911 and then what year is the 911 uh, 09 it's a i got it because it's like a manual yeah and it's it's a driver's car see Um, manual back home is what most cars are yeah but i did the opposite to you when i got the audi i was like I want an automatic. Yeah, yeah. It's got the, it's got the paddle shift. Yeah, right. Like if I want to go manual, but man, it's just in traffic. Not having to do the clutch. That's true. It's fucking. Yeah. But I spent my whole year. Yeah. That my whole year, my whole life, with the fucking clutch control. Yeah, shift. that's rough. It's fun though when you do want to absolutely redline. Yeah. Like early gears. Yeah. Oh, I'm pretty jealous of that. You ever? You you a Lambo guy or not? Mm. Uh, I mean, no, I'm, I've turned into a Porsche guy. Like I didn't, uh, when I had the Viper, I thought any car that any 911 that wasn't like a turbo or yeah. GT3, there was kind of like, yeah, whatever. It's a girly car. Yeah. But now I've, I've realized like, really it's all in how you drive it. Yeah. And having it's funny because like having not so much power really like allows you to really drive the shit out of it and not worry about going sideways. Cause with the, with the Viper, it was, I was always scared of it because yeah, it's always it's like a GTA car. Yeah. It's like, 
there's stories of, you know, people, I think it's some, a big, a big number of like 30% of all new Vipers were wrecked within two miles of the, oh, of, of the dealership. Wow. <laughs> just people just like, yeah. Uh, so I was always scared of that, but, uh, when I, when I got the nine eleven, it's like, it's 380 horsepower. So it's not like but they're, they're so nice. I mean, that is enough. Like it's enough and it's enough to get in trouble. Uh, yeah. and, uh, you know, it's enough, it's enough to like, when you get on a back road to ring it out and, and really just rip it, uh, yeah. you know, it, what, what color is it? Black yeah baby how annoying is it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's fuck me i get my car clean like i don't do it myself i'm yeah. not i can't i can't i'm not a car clean guy i i, I bet to, you are i have to clean it myself yeah i knew yeah. it anyone who's like because i'm not like a car guy i could be becoming a car guy yeah but like i live in an apartment and right i'm not fucking dragging down i don't have a hose or anything right, or right. a jet washer yeah, if yeah. i did then maybe i would but i get my car cleaned up and then live in fucking Scotland where the weather is the worst on planet Earth. It's like twice a week at the moment. Yeah. Just because I, like a, a bird, there's a bird that has a vendetta with my car, like at the apartment block. And it's just like, I'll walk out there one day and my car is fucking annihilated, yeah. Oppenheimered <laughs> with bird shit. And then I'm like, no, I'm like, did they get anyone else? No one else. Yeah tactical strike absolutely they like black cars black cars look so fucking cool unless they're dirty unless they're dirty yeah i had one bird shit was so acidic and obviously i'm quite good if the bird shits on it i'm immediate I, to at least get it off yeah took it took it immediately well i woke up at fucking 10 or whatever took it immediately and it had fucking still it had eaten in yeah. and i had to get machine polish yeah i yeah i have to get mine corrected you got to get the yeah. This is what I'm giving you. Ceramic, me a, me advice. yeah. The ceramic is the PPF. Yeah, the PPF, the ceramic. It's expensive though, but it just depends on what you want to. How long does it last? The ceramic, I think, is like five years <laughs> for the good stuff. I mean, yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, though, but they look so good when they're done. Like, yep. I thought about it because I I got lucky. Not even lucky. I I googled around when I got my car because I I got the s3 was standard i was looking around for ages it was standard and it had like it like normal chrome wheels and normal chrome everything yeah. i was like but it was the the one that i wanted which had it was automatic and it had apple carplay and all that yeah. fucking shit because i wasn't going to do a, a lot of people like the older body but no. it didn't have apple carplay I'm right like, i not have fucking carplay yeah so then i was like i was just googling a place like to do like some adjustments and it's right next to my drum studio and i just took it around oh, and they shit. were like oh sick i used to have one of these this is what we can do we can do this new front lip which i smashed the fuck off the other day i need, <laughs> I, I, need, I just forgot about it until yeah. right now it was like two days before i came here i was picking up a phot photographer who i love him to death callum love you buy a fucking car you're a photographer but like i was picking him up from it's not his fault it's my fault yeah. from the train station and it wasn't a train station i was used to and because of the front lip is it's low because yeah. of it snapped a bit off oh really yeah it snapped off that was a good oh it was loud i fucking uh, screamed yeah and then i was probably really rude to him for the rest of the night i didn't mean it but uh I, I went to this place and they were like, yeah, we can do front lip, we can do this. And they just completely blacked out and all this shit. Nice. They know a place that does the remap. But already now I'm like, what else can I do? What else can I do? It's a slippery the, slope. The, the PPF was on the list, but then yeah. you know what else was on the list? Oh. Just rewrap it all. Something else for a little mix up. Yeah. Nardo gray. There you go. <sighs> yeah. But then uh, maybe, is this how it starts? Maybe I'm becoming a car guy. Yeah, it does. It just, yeah, you, you kind of have to pick your poison mm -hmm. on which lane you go down. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's expensive and it's Misha from, uh, yeah. He's, he's, he's supposed to have been on this podcast like three times. We get, in fact, we were going to do one yesterday. But he, he makes was, enough money that he can have fun. See this, 
I this is why I want to talk to him because I'm like, how are you buying these fucking Lambos, bro? Because he owns, he owns businesses. I don't. Yeah, I don't yeah. know anything. Ah, oh, he's he's in GGD. Yeah, he's yeah. fucking okay. He's got loads of money, but yeah. So Lambo is like more of a meme by this point. Yeah, I'm not a Lambo guy. Like I can appreciate them and I love the sound of them. I just that's too much. Like, look at me. Yeah. Like I, I'm, I like driving cars. I like, you know, I like actually going on. Also, twisty, they're five hundred grand. <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah, fucking. There's a guy actually in Nashville. I don't know if I have enough free time to do it. Last time I was in Nashville with Tom, I was at Lifetime Fitness. Okay. Love Lifetime Fitness. That's my fucking shit. <laughs> I wish they were in the UK. If anyone doesn't know, Lifetime Fitness is like rich people gym yeah, where it's everything ev like cryo chambers yeah. cold tanks all this shit fucking unreal oh i had a guest pass i'm not rich subscribe to the patreon um but there was a guy in there and he came up to me just randomly and went are you justin bieber's tattoo artist <laughs> and i was like because you know that's the type of people that are in lifetime yeah yeah and i was like no nah, i'm not mate and he was like oh you're english you look exactly like him pulled the guy up and i was like holy shit i no really way. fucking do we got talking. His name's Arlo, this guy, lovely guy. We got talking, and then we like exchanged Instagrams or whatever. Yeah. And then he has his own car account. Okay. And I found this out later, and he's got an R8, yep. just got a brand new Lambo, and it's in like combat green, but matte. Nice. Like, I, I'm not a Lambo guy. Well, yeah. I, I am. I would fucking have one, but I'm, right. I could never possibly be a Lambo guy. <laughs> but like, I'll show you this car. It's like combat green with like gold wheels and it's fucking nice. nuts. Yes. And uh, he was like, oh, next time you're in Nashville, like, let me know and we'll, we'll go drive the Lambo. I'm like, I might hit him up. Hit him up. Imagine Extend that. Extended a couple of days. We do this and then I die in a Lambo crash. <laughs> <laughs> it comes out and I'm dead. Um, I got things for the end of the end of the podcast. Okay, but like I hate them all, so I'm gonna give I'm gonna, I'm gonna give <laughs> you the sell. opportunity. It's a good sell. Yeah, but, I, but do you know what it is? It's no, like, I have to know now. Yeah, I'll tell I'll tell you all okay. of it. But the the issue is because half of these are with friends, half of these with like friends of friends, and that's a full hole. So you know, a third of these are with friends, a third are with friends of friends, and then a third is with people who I don't who are on their press cycle normally if I'm at home. Yeah, yeah. And the people that I don't know even slightly, like we've hung out, we're good, so I knew yeah. this is not going to be an issue. No one, no one at this point really really will care about the end of the podcast. They've had their fun. I've had fun. Have you had fun? Yeah, of course. Cool. So I'm like, with the press ones, I'm like, I need some structure to the end of the podcast. Okay. So I started doing this thing where I'd be like trying to get them to curate their dream festival. And I like, we would go through obviously who's headlining and all that shit would just be like their favorite man of all time. And the book then we would go through catering, we would go through it. Cause so you get like a little bit of info on their diet. We would go through, you know, like a smaller stage, like, and they, and they tell me a band that, yeah, that they're getting into these days. And then, where would it be? And then they'd have a story about, or oh, we played this, or even like, you know what I fucking hate about festivals? And sometimes people just get it and we have yeah. a great chat. Even uh, they, they don't prepare in advance, but like I'll talk them through it and we have a great chat. But sometimes they, people are just like, um, oh, we played this one festival. I'm like, oh, this is, this <laughs> fucking sucks. So then I'm um, now I'm off that idea. Yeah. But the one before it, I used to just do your top five artists of all time. Okay. Which people hate to be told. I saw the fucking, because the fear of not knowing in yeah. advance, which I should have told you in advance. But that one's good because then we can go off on tangents with those, like we already fucking have with Primus and with Metallica. Everything. Or, no, that's it. Right, that, that's it. That's the two options for the end of the podcast. Yeah. I mean, or a top five of something that we talked about during the podcast, but, yeah, I mean... I'm not going to ask you top five cars, am I? No, that... No, it's not going to work. No. That, <laughs> that's not going to work. Which would you like to do? I mean, top five artists is really tough. In a good way, tough, though? Yeah, I mean, you know... Because you can get down on your influences, or you can get, you know... You've already said some of your metal, 
But is Metallica your favourite band of all time? Have you got a favourite band or artist of all time? Uh, the, they're up there, you know? It's like... It, they would have to be number one. Uh, Faith No More Ooh, is up there. Interesting. Um, Wu-Tang. Oh, man. Yeah. No, no, you're not up against it, don't worry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just rewinding you up. Because um, I'm going to come back to some of these. So just fucking reel them out. Give me, give me two more. Refused? Fuck yeah. yeah. Has to be. And... I, I, uh, I turned down a refused episode. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because... What's his name? Dennis? Yeah. The press agent... I'm not going to say who they were. I can't remember who they were. Okay. Got, it was for whatever their last record was. The press eight or an EP, I think. Yeah. Got me it really, really late. But I organized the thing. We'd organized when to do it. I was super stoked on doing it. Fucking love refused. You know, it was just not long after the comeback. Big, big chat. I mean, the comeback's actually quite a while ago now, but do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we saw, I saw that we we saw that in San Francisco. Yeah, fuck it. It's awesome. So good. Incredible. One of the very few comebacks where I'm like, oh, okay, come back. And then yeah. they did it. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah this is sick. <laughs> yeah. But like, didn't give me the EP until the day before the press agent gave me the EP okay. until the day before, and I didn't have enough fucking time. We'd organised it like a month in advance, right? And I was like, I can't possibly listen to this and get it done by then. Right. So I, because I had Dennis's number, I text him. And was just like, hey, I've got this really, really late. And uh, would you mind if we did an episode going through The Shape of Punk to Come? Because it like changed my life, essentially. Yeah. I was, you know, I was, I was into fucking punk and hardcore. And then you guys mixed it up, put that jazz in there and shit. And uh, he like freaked out. <laughs> really? Yeah, he was like, no, I don't want to do this, blah, blah, blah. And I feel like, because everyone asked him about the shape of punk to yeah, come. Yeah, of course. That's the problem with doing a, gr a, brown a groundbreaking <sighs> You're thing. Fucked. You're Yeah. You're fucked. Uh, and he was really annoyed at the press agent as well, I think. Really? I think they'd had I mean, some beef or something I before. Know. I could I, tell in his tone. I get it. I see both sides of it. But it's like, when you do something that, influential that groundbreaking that fresh that good yeah it's the mona lisa like no absolutely one's, no one's being like i hey, remember that helicopter hey, drawing that? you did yeah yeah yeah. Like, no it's right mona lisa talk to me yep <laughs> yeah i and i even saying that out loud i was like it fucking annoys me when someone asks me about one of my old bands like an old band that I don't care about anymore and it was a bad time in my life. And then someone's like, when are you going to do a cover of, or when, when are you going to put up a playthrough of this song? And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I fully see the reasons now. But it was annoying because I really did want to talk to him. Yeah. But, it but was, it's, that's the thing is that you, you're a musician probably in part because of that record. 100%. Right? And it's not, you're not just a, so another journalist who's just trying to get a yeah i got him to do this kind of thing yeah that's another an actual problem with like i don't consider this press i consider this just fucking hanging out and talking yeah of course sometimes but it falls under press which is annoying yeah but then there's like a whole thing where people now hate me not me in particular but just like the concept yeah. of press because there is a lot of dog shit out there there is so it's getting really hard to get someone to come and talk because they just like they like he probably assumed that i was just going to be looking for clickbait that's the other you thing you know what you just need to tell them to call me who, who you I'll got, let who them got know. on the rolodex that i can fucking i'll let them know it's not bullshit it's it's a real hang we're gonna chat about yeah. fucking whatever you want no hey you know the new album not going to talk about it <laughs> but that like weirdly and this is my usp unique selling point there you go um 
I tend to not talk about music. Right. Like about the artist's music. Yeah. Particularly the the one that they're like you're you're not on a press cycle. Right. Really, realistically. We're at you the must, end. we're the yeah, we're at the end of the cycle. You must be doing a new album. Working on some stuff. Anything you can say? Mm. Well, what I'll say is if you go through the discography, they tend to come out almost every two years, like clockwork, maybe three. <laughs> so put the fucking two and two together. Yep. I can assume that's what's happening there. But I like, I don't, unless they have a story, a real story to tell that they haven't told 400 times yeah. about it. People fucking, people buy into the human being. They already like the music or right. they do the opposite, which is what I did on a bunch of bands like, the, the every time I die DVD, you ever see that DVD? No. Called shit happens. It was when they were on their like second album, I think. I never even listened to the band. I saw that DVD and I was like, all right, this is my favorite band. Shit. And it was just like that. People buy into the person, right? And then they check out the music, and when the person comes off well, and you know they're like, oh, I like this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're so much more open minded when they hear the music. And it tends to just create bigger... The amount of comments I always get... I mean, I, everyone's fucking heard of Paparoach. You're doing me the favour here. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing you a favour. But the amount of times I'll have a band on that's like smaller and then people will be like, man, I love this guy. Then yeah. I checked out the band. It's fucking awesome. And I was yeah. like, yes, I uh, am. Yeah. I'm doing press. Yes. But don't call me press. No. You need to give me one more of this top five though because we went off on the tangent and refused. Deftones. Fuck yeah. Uh, there, are, there are big brothers kind of... Have like, you have you toured with every one never, of, never done a tour with with them. Deftones? They won't take us out. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, now I guess the, it would be mismatched. We're the. I mean, I don't want to say that we're the like the younger, uncool brother, but you know, they're Chino likes what he likes. Mm. He's like, you know. I can't believe you never talk. You must have done festivals. Yeah, we've done shows, but... But you're friends and stuff. Was... Yeah, I mean, when we see him, that we're... Yeah. I wouldn't say we're super tight, but, you know, yeah. yeah you say what up. Yeah. Faith No More? You ever talk about Faith No More? Never. That one would have worked. I feel like you headline, though. Uh, I don't know. I I don't know. We met... We've met... Uh, well, on that corn tour... Mike Borden was drumming for Corn, which oh. was incredible for us. Yeah, we were, we're big fans. Also incredible for the live show. I yeah, imagine. Yep. Speaking of people that didn't want to embrace technology, I know <laughs> that whole story. <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, and then we met Billy Gould. He was doing, you know, his one of his bands. And, yeah. Uh, and super, he was a super awesome guy. But never met Mike Patton. And I don't know if I want to. Why? Because you think it will ruin it? Maybe. Mm. I just don't want to catch him on an off day. Because I've heard he's on off. All the best ones are. Yeah. I had that recently. I'm not going to say who it was. I met literally one of my idols. And I went, oh, I don't think that guy likes me. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just like, I'm pretty sure I wasn't punishing or anything. But I just yeah. came away from it like, oh, I wish that hadn't happened. Yeah. <laughs> Keep um, it up here. When it, when we met Metallica, just a couple of months previous to that, um, Lars had been talking some shit about us. <sighs> and yeah, it was Guitar World, I think it was. He said we were like a cheap rip off of Iron Maiden, which was like, yeah, well, last resort, right? Uh, which to me, it was like, <sighs> super painful but uh at you know at the same time i was like whatever the fuck are you you know whatever but it's also a stretch it is but you know guitar magazine yeah, yeah yeah whatever so we did this thing called um icon uh on mtv i remember it the metallica one we did the aerosmith one. Oh, and they were metallica were there and this it was the craziest thing. I met James, couldn't say a word. You yeah. know, Lars came up to me and he was like, "Hey, man, I'm really sorry about our asshole guitar player." I was like, "That's cool." 
Yeah, don't worry about it. I was like, because I had heard mixed things about Lars too. Oh, wait, so it wasn't Lars that said it. It was, no. it was. No, it was, it was Lars that, no, Kirk said it in the magazine, but Lars apologized for him. Oh, okay, okay. At the icon thing. And I was like, that's awesome. That is awesome. I've heard that he's the fucking man. Yeah. It's like, super, super cool. Fucking just. Architects the man. just did that run with him. And yeah, they're yeah. just like, this guy is the fucking best. And I was like, I fucking knew he was the best. I'm the Lars apologist. <laughs> I like fucking, I, I love yeah. his drumming. I love everything about him. And I was like, I can just tell that guy's a fucking legend. Yep. Desperate for him on the downbeat. It's number one bucket list. That's the one I can't help you with. I mean, I, <laughs> I have people that can help me with it. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like, what I need to happen with it is for him to watch an episode of this because he likes the guest. Right. And then him, because you know what we're all like, I want to do that. Uh -huh. And then guess what? I'll go, yes, Lars, you can do that. Yes. I would love it. Yep. Anyway, let's end it. You can, yeah, drive, yeah. you can drive your truck home. <laughs> I'm going to get Chipotle probably. It was a pleasure. Yes. Thank you for having me. It was awesome. Thank you very much. Um, if you don't know Papa, if you don't know Papa Roach, you're an idiot. Um, if you do know Papa Roach, but maybe you only know them from like, the best rock playlist of 2000s. Yes. Fucking check out the new stuff. Check out Ego Trip. Just get on it. Yep. It's a band that consistently evolves and are full of unbelievably hospitable, lovely people. Thank you. Thank you, and I'll see you again. Yes, sir.